Lost Cities, the card game by Rainer Kinesia. It's a two-player game in which you're trying to form expedition routes to go to Lost Cities, Himalayan Mountains, or a mysterious volcano, and you're trying to score points in each of these different routes. The game itself has two different game modes, a front and a backboard, in which you're simply going to be placing down a card or discarding a card, and then drawing a card from the deck or drawing one from one of the many discards. The end of the game is going to trigger when the deck runs out of cards and as soon as that happens it's over and you're going to score points. You can also bet on your routes. There's routes in the game based on colors and if you do well enough on those routes you're going to score their points value minus 20 uh, or you can score double, triple, or even quadruple the points if you get lucky enough. Now of course your opponent's going to want to score as many points as they can on the same routes and each route only has a certain number of cards so you're competing to get the most points in each of the routes you're choosing to go through. You can go through less or more but spreading yourself too thin might be a problem as well as trying to choose just one because your opponents might hold the key to the most points in those specific routes. Lost Cities is a competitive game, which is a pretty simple game to learn, but a difficult game to master. I'll show you down below how to play a game, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about this two-player competitive card game. Welcome to Lost Cities and the setup for the two-player game. Each player is going to get eight cards from a shuffled deck, along with a board that is both front and back sided for the advanced mode of play and the beginner mode of play. The box and the rule book here, which is very, very simple and explains the game very well, along with the point scoring system here on the back of the rule book. If you want to play with the beginner side of the game, you're simply going to take out all of the purple cards from the deck, and the purple cards are pretty easy to distinguish. They have a symbol as well as, of course, the color. If you want to try the more advanced version, which I suggest you do after playing the game probably just once over, you're going to go ahead and flip the board over and keep all of the cards, shuffle the deck, and give each player eight. Regardless, though, the game is pretty much the same on both front and back, just with one of them, the unique version of the game or advanced version, having that extra player color. And then each player will choose a side. You'll go ahead and advance this board into the middle, give one player their eight here and one player their eight here and the game will begin. The player who starts is the player who last visited a volcano or jumped in a volcano or swam in a volcano. You guys can go ahead and decide what you'd like for that, but it's pretty simple. Look at your hand of cards and or organize them how you'd like, whether it be by color or by number, and then go ahead and take your turn. To begin, you can choose to simply play a card face up in any of these areas here. Each of these colors are different areas and you're going to have one on your side of the board and one on your opponent's side of the board. Additionally, there are discard piles in this game. Each discard pile is represented on the board itself with its color, and when you discard a card, if it be yellow, you'll place it in the yellow, if it be green, in the green, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and start with A, placing a card down or discarding a card and putting it in its correct color location. When you're playing cards, you want to play, or you have to play, lowest to highest. So for instance, if I wanted to play on the yellow, I would place a two down. And that would be at the end of my placement phase. Uh, on my next turn, I have to play a card that is higher than it, which would be something like a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or even a nine. But once I place that next card, I can never place a card that is lower again. So there's going to be a limit if I place this to these two cards here. Two through uh, or three through eight would not be able to be played on this side of the board. So I'll go ahead and simply just play this card here. My other option could have been to discard a card face up here. Then after that, I will simply be able to draw a card from the deck here, or I can draw a face up card from the discard pile, but it can't be the card I discarded face up on the same turn. Uh, in this case, because of the first part of the game, I'll simply draw a card from the deck here. Then it's the next player's turn. They'll look at their hand as well, and they'll organize it how they want. There are cards like this one specifically that have little handshaking symbols. This is a card that is even lower than the value of two, and you can play more than one of them in a row. But these are the betting cards, and if you fail to achieve a certain point score in each of the locations with betting cards, they can give you two, three, and even four times negative points score, so you have to be very careful with these cards here. I'll simply go ahead and choose to play this blue one here and place the handshake down, signaling that I am betting on blue 
blue, which will then inform my opponent that they may want to hold on to blue cards in their hand because they know I'm going to go for the space right here. Because once you play a card down in a specific area for your expedition, that will score you points at the end of the game, whether it be positive or negative. So if this was my only card at the end of the game, none of these would score for me, but this one would. Okay, so after that, now I'm going to go ahead and draw a card from either one of these spaces here or right here. And then I am done and it's the next player's turn. Now he's got a 9 for that yellow, but he doesn't really want to play that because that's going to limit him on where he can go ahead and play. So he can go ahead and simply choose what he wants to discard a card. He has no red cards in his hand other than this betting card. So maybe he wants to get rid of that card and then draw a card from the deck ending his turn. Now he got a handshake yellow, which would be good, but you can't place a handshake because it's lower than 2. So he might have to discard that card. The next player is up, and he's got a 10 blue, and he's got a 6 blue. Eh, he's got that 3 yellow, so he doesn't want to give that or this to the other player. And he's got this white card here, which he has no other white cards in hand, so he'll go ahead and discard that betting card and draw a new card. Ah, oh, there's a white one. Maybe he chose wrong. Then pick again, and it's just going to keep going just like this, where players are going to simply be playing cards down, trying to score as many points as possible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the end of game is likely going to look like in some for some for some people. So I'll just show you basic the basic end of scoring, and then you guys can see what I mean how how it kind of functions. The game is going to end when the deck runs out. So whenever the a player draws from this deck here, and there is no more cards to draw. That will signify the end of the game, and people are going to simply go ahead and score. So I'll go ahead and just show you a couple of these. Maybe this and this. Okay. And there's definitely going to be, like, there's definitely going to be cards in the discard pile here. But if we'll just look at one player's side here. Okay, so look at these two to score. And luckily at the back of the book, it tells you exactly how that works. So we'll go ahead and show you this. What you need to do is score over 20 points in each of the areas that you have cards. After that, you're going to get a total of sc a total score, and then you're going to multiply it by the number of handshakes in that column. If you don't have enough to cover 20 points, you're going to score negatively. Additionally, for each of these multipliers, you'll double, triple, or even quadruple that negative score. So we have a 9, an 8, and a 2 here which is going to be 19 plus 7 is uh, 26 points. So it will be 26 minus 20, which means that this whole row here is 6 points. Over here, we've got a 10 and a 9, which is 19, plus 2 is 21, plus 5 is 26. So 26 minus 6 is 6, and then we're going to multiply it by 2, which is 12 points. 12 plus 6 is 18 points, and that would be the total score here. Now, if I had 8 cards in any of my columns, that's a bonus of 20 points, and then you would add that on for each column you got at least 8 cards in. Additionally, let's go ahead and say I didn't have this card. This would be 9, 10, 11, plus 5 is going to be 16. 20 minus 16 is negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So in this case, we'd have a 6 and a negative 8. We'd actually score negative 2 points here. So you have to be very careful when playing these cards down because this can make or break your chances of winning the game. And that's the basic idea for it. You're going to score each of the areas in your expedition as well as your opponent will score theirs. And whoever has the most points is the winner of this two-player competitive game. Let's go ahead and come up and I'll discuss it with you. Lost Cities is a simple yet complex two-player card game. It's very simple when you take turns. You're simply going to be discarding or placing down in your areas, and then you're going to be able to take from the discard or take from the deck, always giving you eight cards at the end of your turn. When the deck runs out, you're going to score based on each of the individual colors on your side of the board, and whoever has the most points is the winner. That being said, explaining it in only like 15 seconds, the game is outright challenging because your opponent is out to keep you from scoring points. If I have a white territory or white area of control and all I need is that 10, which would give me the eight cards, which would give me a bonus 20, plus if I had that 10, it would give me even 10 more points, which could be multiplied. 
I'll never see that card if my opponent has it because they will never give it to you. Additionally, you think it might be in the deck, so as you're going for certain locations, you're digging and hoping to find those cards that your opponent may or may not hold in their hand. I always want to play with the competitive game of advanced mode of this game, and once you play it once, I think you'll agree with me you'll never want to play the basic game again because it's simple, simple enough to understand the advanced version, but yet it provides even more strategy because there's even more cards in the deck. It doesn't change the way the game is played, but it provides a deeper understanding of the game in order for you to succeed. There's a lot of different strategies in Lost Cities, one being to focus on all of them and trying to score a certain amount of points in all of them, and even getting negative points in one area might be worth doing because it prevents your opponents from taking those cards and scoring points. What's better, your opponent getting 20 points for an area or you getting negative four points? Negative four is probably better on your side because it prevents them. Additionally, watching your opponent place those multiple players face up back to back is going to try to make you keep on to the cards that they want but it's also going to limit you as to whether you're going to be playing a certain area if your opponent has a bunch of blue multipliers and you've got the nine and the ten you're never going to dump them but it also restricts your hand and it limits what you can play and eventually you're going to actually have to choose to play those cards down and suffer a negative penalty or discard them and give them to your opponents and these same choices will be said for your opponent do you want to focus on just two Two, maybe even three colors or are you willing to sacrifice a bunch of points to negate your opponent's ability to gain points and then focus on a couple of them to just score a massive amount of points as much as you possibly can at least the game can be a very close scoring game or it could be a complete and utter knockout it really just depends on how good you are at the game yes there is chance in the game because you are drawing cards you may get the best hand ever or you may get the worst hand ever but really that's not going to give you the advantage in the game when it comes to the overall play because by the time the halfway mark hits you'll have these cards that you may want to play so even if you had a 7, 8, 9 and even a 10, you, were you willing to drop those without a multiplier? Maybe not but now you've got 4 cards in your hand that you're sitting on or maybe you've got uh, 2 multipliers, a 1, 2 and a 3 and then that's great because you're able to place them all down but you still need to hit over 20 and maybe your opponent has all the big cards in their hand and they're never going to give them to you. There is a lot of thought in this game and in general, I'm not a huge two player game fan, but this one does it for me. It's quick, it's simple, it provides a lot of thought and if I win or lose, it doesn't matter because I have learned how to play the game better and the next time I go at it, I have a better chance of winning. I've played this game multiple times with multiple opponents and I can say that I have done my fair share of winning and definitely my fair share of losing in Lost Cities. I haven't played any other Lost Cities games and I believe there probably is due to the fact that this is the original card game so maybe there's a board game I'm not sure but if you've played any of the other ones let me know in the description below what you think of those as well as of course the card game itself. Do you enjoy the game? Do you think there's too much chance? Do you think there's a lot of lot more strategy than people give it credit for or enough strategy or uh, the, uh, the amount of strategy people do give it credit for? Let me know what you think but for me specifically Lost Cities is going to get my seal of approval. I really, really, really enjoy this game. It's something I'll definitely pull out when I want to play with just one other player and I want it to be very quick, but yet give me a lot of thought. I really, really enjoy this game. Cosmos did an excellent job picking this one up and publishing it out for you guys. If you're interested, go ahead and take a look down below in the description where you can pick up the game Lost Cities, the card game for yourself and battle it out with your partner, friend, or family member. Thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.